Let's start out with what the Carter Shop scale is, right? And even the Carter Shop scale, this is a conversation after our brother Nipsey Hussle released his um, life form energy, the brother Idris Sandu started making rounds on social media and a lot of Nipsey's um, videos started going viral. People were looking at his interviews. So this is the first time certain people heard anything about the Carter Shop scale, okay? So we're gonna read the definition real quick. All right, next, yes. In 1964, Nikolai Kardashev came up with the idea that the status of a culture as a whole depends on two primary things, energy and technology. He theorized that a civilization's technological advancements runs parallel to the amount of energy that the civilization is able to harness and manipulate. Essentially, the more energy that a society can produce, the more technologically advanced they are. This was originally just tied to energy available for communication, but has since expanded. In other words, According to this theory, cultural development in a very widest sense is a product of energy and technology. Through technology, energy is harnessed, and as the social systems are expressions of this technology, the status of a culture rests upon and is determined by the amount of energy that is harnessed. The scale has a number of different categories, levels of classifications. In recent years, scientists have expanded this scale to measure hypothetical civilizations, civilizations that are galactic, intergalactic, and even multiverse in nature. So for the people to be talking about pseudo, it's a scientific fact that they are studying the possibilities of these particular civilizations, okay? This is not pseudoscience. Next, all right? And just to speak about the name Nikola, because Nikola Kardashev's name is familiar with Nikola Tesla. What does the word Nikola mean? We're gonna be getting into etymology. Nikola means a boy's name, meaning victory of the people. As a masculine name, Nikola is best associated with Serbian American inventor and scientist Nikola Tesla. Did we know that the goddess Nike is a melanated being? Did you know that? Okay, well, you know, like I said, coincidentally, we're talking about victory laps and marathons, and coincidentally enough, that's what Nikola means victory for the people. Okay, next. Level of civilization based on Kardashev scale. Type O civilization is a sub-global culture. A civilization that harnesses the energy of its home planet, but not to its full potential just yet. We're currently at about 0.73 on the Kardashev scale. A type one civilization is a planetary culture. This civilization will be slightly more advanced than those found on Earth. They will be capable of utilizing all available resources on their home planet, skillfully harnessing the energy output of an entire world. Type two stellar culture. Such a society will be able to harness all of the energy of its star. Several methods for this have been proposed, the most popular of which is the hypothetical Dyson sphere, type three civilization. Galactic culture. This civilization will be able to harness the energy output of a galaxy. Next. Type four civilization, universal culture. This civilization will be an intergalactic culture spanning the breadth and width of the universe. They will travel across the cosmos commanding the power of a billion trillion suns. Type 5 multiverse culture and civilization will have transcended their universe of origin. It will be capable of universe scale manipulation, jumping between multiverses that contain varied forms of matter, physics, and space-time. A civilization such as this will be home to beings of unimaginable power and ability. So these things are not impossible to do. They're just telling you on this planet, you don't have enough energy to do it. Okay? Next. Now let's talk about energy as it applies to the body and the different philosophies that pertain to what part of the hemisphere you are as part of the planet. So if you was in the Eastern world, when they speak about energy and the potentiality of energy in the body, right, they will tell you that our body is comprised of the subtle body, which is the super causal body or the subtle ego, right, the feeling that we are separate from God, the causal body or the intellect, decision-making process and reasoning ability the soul, God within each of us, the mental body or the mind, feelings, emotions, and desires, the vital body, the vital life-sustaining energy of the vital, and the physical body, comprising of the five senses, i.e. touch, taste, sound, smell, and sight, okay? So what happens to each of these bodies after death? They say that the physical body remains on earth, the vital energy, which is prana, is released back into the universe, and these bodies comprise the subtle body. After the subtle body travels to a subtle plane of existence such as heaven, nether or hell, depending on the spirits of sins and the spiritual levels, right? 
But here in the West, when you ask about energy and you ask about energy's relationship to the body, they're going to give you a very dry explanation, right? A very scientific dry explanation that doesn't speak nothing about spirit. They're going to say, well, man is only capable of 30,000 kilojoules for 24 hours or about 360 watts for 24 hours. Unless you are a super fit sportsman like Michael Phelps, who can spend 9,000 calories per day or about 400 watts per 24 hours, then you will spend more than 33,500 kilojoules per hour. Most people spend about 10,000 kilojoules per day or about 120 watts per 24 hours. The maximum power of a superhuman can produce for a few seconds is 2,450 watts, right? So our goal should be, shit, every day we should wake up and produce 2,451 watts. Because that's not impossible. You dig what I'm saying? But this is a very mundane explanation of mediocrity, and that's what's expected of you in this society. Whereas in the Eastern world, they give you this ability to tap into all of these different bodies. So we don't even have an explanation to explain in this world, what is this pain body that we're all connected to, right? That's your subtle body. All right, next please. Types of energy in human body. We have chemical energy, which is the storage form of energy. Electrical energy for nerve impulses. Heat energy, the product of meta, meta, metabolism energy to keep the body temperature at 37 degrees. And the mechanical energy is the capacity to do metabolic work, right? Muscles to be able to move. Okay, so that's the energy that you're using in the gym. The heat energy is to use the energy that you use when Jack Frost is outside, right? Electrical energy is the energy that you are utilizing for impulses in the body. And the chemical energy is the energy that you have contracted from digesting foods. It's stored energy. It's potential energy. What are you going to use this energy for next? Right? So the human energy system, how is energy stored in the body? Energy in the body is available for immediate use in the form of ATP, another related high-energy phosphate compound. Phosphocreatine, ATP may be formed from either carbohydrate, fat, or protein after those nutrients have undergone some complex biochemical changes in the body. So, all of this particular energy is converted, like they say, into an ATP, right? KT the Arch degree has amazing amount of lectures on YouTube where you can look into the possibilities of what ATP is and what one particular, what one body has the ability of doing with all of this energy available to it, okay? So they just have a very rudimentary explanation of how you burn calories throughout the day and what you do and what have you, but this is not talking about the full potentiality of your body, and there's nothing in this particular system that reinforces that other than if you get into Eastern philosophies such as martial arts. The martial arts explains to you how to tap into the multiplicity of these bodies that you have available to you, and that takes discipline. And that's another thing that's not reinforced in this particular society. Next, right? So when we talk about harnessing energy, right? We have been primed for energy harnessing and energy harvesting since we were children, because we was introduced to this concept through cartoons such as Transformers, G.I. Joe, and every single Marvel comic universe movie deals specifically with the Tesseract, or what they call the Cosmic Cube, right? And utilizing, that's what I explained, utilizing the Law of 44, how you can concentrate on one shape or one figure and control society, or control humanity, or control civilizations, or control a galaxy for that matter, because we have to understand what exactly are the shapes of this particular planet to begin with. Right, so everything is sacred geometry. They've been tapping into energon cube forever. Even the cosmic creation stories that we always hear about antiquated civilizations, they talk about what? People came from another place, in another dimension, and they came specifically to harness energy, right? And uh, Michael Tellinger, he said that he found one of the oldest sites on the planet is in South Africa. And this is where they said that the Anunnaki came down and they started utilizing uh, or they got into genetic experimentations to create humans to begin with so they can harness gold out of South Africa. And they were utilizing, they was coming from all around the galaxy to harness gold for energy, right? But we're telling you, if you're looking for gold for energy, you don't have to go far because I brought something we did it back. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
All right, so with the Energon Cube, this is specifically what they was talking about, going around the universe, snatching up energy and putting it into a cube, right? In my past lecture, we have spoke about the importance and the relationship of the cube as it pertains to all of the motifs of this life and this civilization and this planet that we live in. It's boxes and cubes, okay? In the ancient times, that's what they referred to when they spoke about God. God was a cube, all right? Next slide, please. Okay, the Tesseract is also known as the Cosmic Cube. It's the main source of conflict in the Avengers. Little was known about it till the Avengers were, where it is revealed to be a doorway to another world, one in which the Shatari inhabit. As S.H.I.E.L.D. is studying the Tesseract, Loki opens the doorway and creates a portal that he uses to get to Earth. Next, the Tesseract is a cube within a cube, okay? And the science of the cube is a cube has six sides, but it has eight points. It's two boxes. Right? Connected to one another. So a cube is a 44, but a tesseract is a 44 times 4 because it's a cube within a cube. And if you understand how the relationship of these points work or these nodes, then you can create an entire civilization, or you can control an entire civilization by just creating or controlling one of those particular points because everything is interrelated and interconnected. So that's why you will see so many of the people that we claim to be the masses of the universe utilizing that particular number because it's about controlling the cube. Next. All right. In the movie The Matrix, they had always told you that your ability to generate and harness energy, but your non-ability to utilize that particular potential energy makes you susceptible to be batteries for other forces in different dimensions who just see a giant feasting. Like, you can generate and harness all of this energy, do you know how much energy water itself is capable of? I mean, anybody been in a hurricane before? Anybody seen a tropical storm? Yes. Right? So what's the difference between the water outside of yourself and the water inside of yourself? You think that you're not able to whip up that same kinetic force? Hmm? Just some water alone. Okay? And what you're composed 80% of. So next slide. Right? But all of that gets cut off, unfortunately, when we come into contact with this terror. Right? Anybody know what this is? This Nazis? Right? Salt and sugar. DJ S and S. Once they start remixing you with that, this is going to cut you off from your energy source. Next. Right? And it all starts here. This is how they put you on the cross. Okay? I see male more people running around with their little ghouls and goblins this Thursday. You feel me? Anything else? So you play. 364 days, you're battling the forces of evil, and the one day that you got the end of your out of your ancestors, you throw the horns on. I don't get it, but it starts with the sugar rush, right? So the babies are accumulating all of this sugar come Halloween, okay? And then the day of the ancestors open up the next day, these children are discombobulated because they're on crack cocaine, which is sugar, right? Ancestors are looking at them like, really, this is crazy. You feel me? You're not making no offerings, you're not laying nothing out to the ancestors, you're getting drunk off sugar, right? You're bringing your children around strangers. The whole community responded when Polite put that post up, okay? But nobody was like, well, goddamn, this is the one day that people bring up their children or send their children around strangers to get candy, thus not making a connection to when your daughter grow up and look for a sugar daddy, okay? So it starts here with Halloween, New Year's come, the only way that you can change anything new about yourself, you have to change the water because the water contains all of the memory in your body. But when you drink on New Year's Eve, you're depleting all of the water. So when you wake up on the first, you got a hangover. See, your spirit is like, nigga, I know you're not about the resolutions. You can't be. You don't have enough energy. You understand? And your programs have not been reprogrammed. You have to program the water, right? In Hebrew, water means mean. That's memory. That's a root word for memory. So... They get you, and all of this is voluntary, okay? This is just how they throw in your entire cycle law. So you're going into the fourth quarter. If we was talking fiscal, because they say it's a fiscal calendar. When fall comes, you go into the fourth quarter, right, in business. It's when you close your books. It's when you go out your strongest. But this is how they make you your weakest, going into your fourth quarter, okay? So we want to make sure that you don't start 2020 at your weakest, because you can't harness the energy, and we can't have these hyperdimensional conversations about jumping planets and shit like that. 
if you can't get off your cross, right? So here goes New Year's. Alcohol consumption, intoxication, right? So all of the food that you just ate is going to be made into um, ammonia and wine and putrefy because the wine is going on the bread. None of it is moving. You're depleting the water. You're up all night. You're partying. And then the next day you talk about, I want to start a new meat. You're going to need 90 days of recovery, my nigga. Okay? So then after, oh, should I say my bad because I'm jumping, right? After Halloween is Thanksgiving, so this is where the stuffing comes. This is where you fill your gut up with the bread, right? And then the wine comes, and that comes to putrefy the bread afterwards. Or to turn the bread now that's putrefied into poison. So you're certified walking around with all of this ammonia poison in you. And then, how, and then Valentine comes, which is the day after a festival called Lupercalia which is on February 13th, which is the 44th day of the, world, uh, of, of the year. And it's a festival to honor the, uh, the wolf, 